Did you know that most of the common cash flow strategies that you'll read about in articles and most videos, they're really strategies that you have no control over, that they might sound like good ideas, but when it comes right down to it, somebody else is making the decision for you whether or not they want to implement your cash flow strategy that's been recommended by the expert who wrote the article. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, the number one most common cash flow strategy that it's not just cash flow specialists, but there's all sorts of gurus out there that say, increase your cash flow now, do this, actually will drain the bank account for most companies as soon as they start being successful. And if they're too su successful, they'll go out of business completely before they see enough additional cash flow coming in to actually see a benefit from that strategy. Number one cash flow strategy. Now I'm going to talk to you about all this in a minute. I'm David Safir, and I'm the founder of Cash is Clear Learning Systems that teaches you, and I'm going to be teaching you everything that I know about having a cash flow mindset so you can learn how to model cash flow, how to manage cash flow, and how to maximize cash flow. And the most important thing, perhaps of all, is how to mentor other people that you need to get cooperation from to really make an impact on the cash flow in your organization. So whether you're a CEO, a CFO, a controller, an accountant within a company, or you're an outside, preventer of the, uh, outside provider of those services. So in other words, a CPA, a chartered accountant, a financial advisor, or a bookkeeper, providing those services for other organizations, all of you can benefit from learning how to manage cash flow. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's get started. Today, I'll be talking about how to evaluate cash flow strategies and how they impact, how those cash flow strategies impact an organization. Like I mentioned, common cash flow strategies are mostly outside of your control, and some of them will actually drain your cash, not add to the coffers, at least on the short term, maybe not, uh, and, and that short term might not be long enough for you to survive. So let me give you some ideas of what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to equip you with 10 ways to evaluate cash flow strategies so you know the level of control and a, a whole bunch of other key issues around, is this a strategy that you want to implement or recommend? So here are five typical cash flow strategies that most articles will include. Number one, and it's not just articles, there's all sorts of gurus out there saying, I will help you sell more so you can increase your cash flow. Sell more, number one strategy. Two, collect your AR, your accounts receivables that are past due, or maybe even that aren't past due, but get your money in. Number three, offer payment incentives. Four, renegotiate supplier contracts. And finally, cut costs. You know, the you can cut your way to success. Well, I'm going to talk to you about that. They're all outside of your control or to make a manageable and material difference, they are materially outside of your control. Let me explain. All of them require third-party cooperation or second party, right? So sell more. Well, who makes the decision? You can make the decision to try to sell more. You can put more systems in place. You can add salespeople. You can do incentives. But at the end of the day, it's your customers who will make the decision whether or not to buy more. If it's convenient, if they like your product, all sorts of issues, you are you do not have ultimate control of that decision-making process. It is the same thing 
with collecting your accounts receivables. Let me do some role playing. On this side, it's me. On this side, it's my client. You ready? Here we go. Hi, client. You're past due on your accounts receivable. I love you, but will you play, please pay the money? Well, nope. We'll be paying you next week, David. Oh, so at the end of the day, it's their decision, right? And the next one is we'll offer them an incentive. Oh, yeah, but I would give you a 5% discount if you would pay me this week. Well, yep. Um, yeah, we're going to pay you next week, which is a code word for they don't have money in the bank. Again, you can offer all the incentives you want to, but they're going to make their own decision. Next one, renegotiate supplier contracts. Well, that's nice, but you've signed a contract. And you go, well, let's do some role playing again. Hello, Mr. Supplier. Uh, I know we just signed a contract a couple months ago that's good for a year, but I want to renegotiate. Well, that's nice, David. We love you and we appreciate you as a client, but we don't want to renegotiate. We'll talk to you in... Well, not 10 months. We'll talk to you in nine months when the contract's up and renegotiate then. Hey, it's just a fact of life. People adhere to contracts. So finally, number five, we'll just cut costs. Okay. So if you look at the largest costs in, your, in any organization, they're generally number one, human resources, employees. That is a painful cut to make. And now sometimes you might have to, but it's next to impossible to do that short term without impacting morale and other things. Now, maybe you can reduce some overtime if you don't have the orders coming in, but that's a big cost. And it's a huge step of actually cutting employees. What's oftentimes number two is any kind of rent or lease. And boy, you might be able to skip a payment and try to catch up, but boy, you can end up in a snowball effect where you just never catch up. And okay, maybe you pay a little bit late, but usually there's also massive penalties from a percentage standpoint. If you do not pay your mortgage on time, you do not pay your, um, your, your lease or your rent on time. So that's second cost isn't a great one. So let's go, what's the next one? You've got telephones, you can't just turn them off. You've got electricity, you can't turn them off. So truly cutting costs is generally trimming unless you're starting to hack away at the meat. It's your decision, but it is not as simple as just cut costs. Before I give you those 10 ways to evaluate a cash flow strategy, I, I want to talk about something that's critical to understand. I'm not saying those common strategies are bad. I'm just talking about the fact they don't always work. As a matter of fact, every single cash flow strategy that I have, and I have 205 strategies, have opposites. They have times that they will work. They have times that they won't work. They have circumstances that a company has to have to be able to implement and when I say opposites, let me give you my favorite example. One of the, well, if you had a number six strategy on the common things to do, spend cash slowly. You've probably heard that one. Well, let me tell you, that might be an okay idea, but let me give you its opposite, which I think in the long term is a much better strategy, which is spend your cash quickly. And some of you are going to be going, what in the world are you talking about, David? Well, let me tell you, if you spend your cash quickly, you can have significant benefits, not only short-term, but long-term for your company. Let me give you four, four, that's eight, I know, but four on each hand, um, four ways of, or four reasons to spend your cash quickly. Number one, a discount for paying up front. And that might be a significant discount. And all of these, of course, is it worth it to you? Do you have the cash in the bank, right? You have to have cash in the bank to be able to spend your cash quickly. 
Number two, volume discounts. When things go on sale, buy more. If you can get a discount that's worth it, it's worth the cost of the money to buy extra, buy it. Now, I've also worked with a client who almost went out of business because he bought so much extra inventory. Don't do that. But it's a great reason to spend your cash quickly. Um, another one, favorable treatment. What do I mean by that? If you're the guy who's paying early all the time, and all of a sudden there's a shortage on a supply from a supplier, and they've got other clients who pay late all the time, who do you think they're going to want to ship to? If there is a shortage that's fundamental in the economy, and you say, listen, I know I've got 30-day terms, but I will pay cash up front if you put me at the front of the list, that's a possibility. We're talking supply shortages, fundamental. Favorable treatment is not a bad thing. And by the way, if you don't always have cash up that you can do this with, and sometimes you're short, well, do you think that paying fast or, or early before it's due will help you when you're past due and they can remember that you're the client who pays early sometimes? It will. It, it's a fact people like when you're treating them well. The fourth reason you might want to spend your cash uh, more quickly is if it's a tax benefit for you to pay things this year instead of next year. It lowers your tax this year. Now, I'm not a tax expert, ask your accountant, but that could be a really good reason to pay your cash, spend your cash quick. Now, I want to talk to you about the 10 strategy evaluation tools that you have been waiting for. Okay, first one is who controls the decision? We've already talked about that in those common everyday strategies that we talked about, uh, you don't have control. But there are a lot of strategies. As a matter of fact, my list is 205. There are more in your control than out of your control. Who else has control? Your client, your vendor, an investor. That's a biggie. If you've got investors, I'm not a, an attorney. I'm not going to give you advice. But there are certain decisions that you cannot make if you've got an investor or you can put business owner in there as well as investor. Finally, third parties. What do I mean by that when I say third party? They're sort of like outsiders that are not actively involved with your business. The best example I have is a common piece of strategy is go get a bank loan or a credit line. And it's like, wow, that's a great idea. I think I'll go do that. And I don't make phone calls. I'll walk to the bank now. And I say, hey, uh, my fine banker friend, I want to get a loan. Well, guess who makes the decision? They do. So it's outside of your control. All these types of third parties can make decisions. The next two, they sort of go hand in hand. How difficult is it to implement a strategy? And how long does it take to implement a strategy? Now, sometimes some things are uh, generally, if they're hard, they take a long time. Um, but some of them are easy, medium, hard, really hard. It doesn't matter what I say a strategy is, if it's easier or extra hard, it's going to depend a lot on circumstances, your knowledge, your resources, but it's just the fact you make a decision, how much work is this going to cost me or my, my, cli um, my clients or my company to implement this strategy? All right, so that's one. The other one is how long is this going to implement? Some literally you can turn on in a heartbeat and just making the decision and you transfer some money and boom, you've started implementing a savings plan to build up a cash hoard. Um, but on the other hand, if you don't have a second account to 
build the cash hoard. Well, that's going to take at least a day. So that's how long it would take you. Instant. Now we're at a day. Um, unless you're, the bank's closed. So that's going to take the next day. And you decide on a Friday afternoon, it's going to take several days. But it shouldn't take very long if you are able to open the bank account, which means generally you're a business owner. And if you're not, you're going to have to wait until that coincides with the business owner, A, accepting the strategy, and B, being available to go into the bank. So that could take weeks or months. So it's up to you to figure that out. Um, but just because it takes months doesn't mean it's not easy uh, once, you, once you get the ball rolling. Cash flow analysis number four is, does the strategy increase or decrease my profit? Now, I know we're talking about cash flow, but when you think about long-term cash flow, when you're reducing long-term cash flow, you're reducing your profit. Let's go back to the example of accounts receivable, right? That wonderful, every article you ever read, improve your accounts receivable by incenting people to put money in the bank. Now, that could be a great strategy. You got to make payroll this week or next week. And that's a great way to get money in the bank. But if you're saying, I'll give you that 5% discount, remember that offer I made? Long-term, it's costing you money. So you're, you're solving your short-term cash flow issue, but it's going to be decreasing your long-term cash flow. Therefore, you're decreasing your profit. Uh, later on, I will actually give you um, a hint on how to increase your profit when we're looking at one of the other 10 ways. Strategy analysis point number five. Am I going to spend my cash slower or faster implementing this strategy? Now, we've talked about, yep, spend it slower when you can, but let me give you a real concrete reason to spend your cash faster. So the roof on my office needed to be replaced. And we negotiated, I thought it was a great price, but I said, well, let, let me ask you a question. If I pay you up front, would you give me another discount? Now, I was thinking maybe 3% because I won't use my credit card. I'll just give them, you know, pay it with a check or whatever. And, um, or maybe 5% because he's getting paid sooner because um, anyhow, that was, that was my offer. Pay it up front. And he said, yes. And it was a 25% discount for paying up front, 50% for the supplies, and then 50% when it was completed. So it was actually prepaying 25%. Whereas if I had paid with a credit card, a, he would have had the charges, but I was only going to save about 30 days, 45 days before I had to pay that off. So 25% to give up 30 days, I had the cash in the bank. It was wonderful. So sometimes when you say, are we spending our cash sooner? It's okay. It's worth it. Analysis point for any strategy for cash flow, number six. Am I going to receive my money sooner or later? Now, right about now, somebody's saying, David, why would we ever implement something that we'd be getting our cash later? This is about cash flow. Cash flow is about getting money in faster. More, 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 more. All right, well, that's fine. But let's go back to the profitability issue. If instead of taking one payment of $100 today, you were able to confidently get three easy payments for your client of $39.95 over three months. $39.95 today, $39.95 next month, and the following month. So you're now taking it over two months. But in those two months, you're going from $100 in revenue to $120 in revenue which is a 20% increase in revenue, but guess what else it is? It's a heck of a lot more than 20%, unless you've got zero margins, uh, zero costs to deliver the product. You, it's a ton of, it's all profit. 
So if you can wait sometimes and you structure the deal right for waiting, is sometimes it's really worth it to get paid later. So this next way to analyze number seven is really one of my core principles, core issues that I deal with and I really dig into from a mindset perspective, and that is this. Does the strategy fix the root of a problem or does it simply mask the issue or try to fix the results of the problem you've got? So, so does it fix the root cause or the symptom? Let me give you an example. So I'm calling up, hey, can you pay me your money uh, that you owe me? That is a symptom. By the time I've reached the point where my client's paying me late, that means that I've got a problem. Fixing symptoms is generally reactive. On the other hand, if I'm looking at fixing root problems, those strategies are generally proactive. And let me give you an example there. So to get to the point where I'm late, how do I prevent getting to the point where I'm late? Well, I need to look at my accounts receivable system. For example, do I have a process to check and double check to make sure the invoice is correct so it doesn't get delayed and being processed by my client? Uh, another issue is, all right, I think it's correct. I send it off. Well, how do I know that they received it? And even if I got a feedback me mechanism that says they opened the email, how do I know they actually read it and verified it was correct? So verifying that they've read it, that it's correct, everything's okay, that would be another proactive step I could take. Now, this is not supposed to be how do you fix your AR problem, so I'm not going to keep going. But these are all root cause problems for companies that if you have chronic accounts receivable, you got to go back and say, why is it happening over and over and over again? That's fixing the root. So when you're looking at a strategy, be, be honest with yourself and say, am I really fixing the problem? Now, let's fix the symptom because nobody likes to have the symptom of late payments, but to, let's really fix what that root causes, whatever it is for, for whatever strategies you're trying to implement. Number eight, does the strategy simply manage the cash flow or does it maximize your cash flow? So what does that mean? Let's talk manage first. Manage cash flow means that you are moving the same amount of money forward or backwards. You're delaying paying a bill, but that $100 a payment that needs to be made is $100 today or tomorrow or two months from now. Or you are, um, well, and you get the idea. You're managing it. Things come in sooner, right? Um, you're, oh, th there's another one. You call up somebody and say, hey, Joe, do me a favor. You're not, I'm not going to give you anything. Can you just pay me this week instead of next week? Well, that same $1,000 you're owed comes in this week. Great. You're managing the movement of money. Maximization. And maximizing cash flow is where you're actually increasing, using a strategy to increase the total cash flow, that long-term cash flow. So I'll go back to my roof. Was that a cash management or a cash maximization strategy? Now, yes, I, I, I managed it by saying I'm going to pay sooner, but the motive was it was a cash flow maximization strategy. And those are the ones that are really going to fix a lot of root problems, end up being in maximization mode, not just management. Okay, number nine is an interesting one. Number nine asks the question, how frequently can you uh, implement the strategy? And what do I mean by that? For example, my roof discount example. Well, I'm only going to buy one roof. So I can only implemented that one time for my roof, but maybe I can do it on a continual basis for other expenses by saying what would happen if I brought it, it if I um, paid you quickly, right? And so that could be 
one time, but done many times over a lot of different applications. That's one. Number two, frequency. To make a permanent shift. Let's give an example of that would be to renegotiate your lease. Yes, it's up to the, the landlord, but for whatever reason, you've got the ability to renegotiate. Right now, there's a lot of vac vacancies all over the country, all over the world because of COVID and people working from home. So you get to renegotiate. It's a permanent shift in that expense to increase your cash flow. So the third time of frequency is, well, it's just variable and it depends. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, let's say you're offered a cash discount for paying a receivable early and you're like your client, you just don't have the money in the bank this week. But you can say, listen, I can't do it this week. Let me know in the future. I would love to take advantage of that kind of a discount. If you ever need me to pay early, let me know. So next month, your uh, supplier is in a cash crunch again, and they call you again, say, hey, listen, you know, you said give, to give you a call if uh, we do discounts for early payment. Do you want to do it this month? And you go, ah, yes, I would. But let me ask you a question. I owe you $10,000. If I pay you $5,000 now, can you give me that discount on the $5,000? thousand and so you're sort of splitting the difference versus the following month you got plenty of money in the bank and they say hey give you a discount if you pay early you say yeah that's great i've got the money here's my ten thousand dollars this month i get the full five percent discount so it just depends sometimes on the circumstances that you're in there you go that's the frequency discussion all right we're at the final way to analyze and that is who receives the short-term benefit of implementing a strategy. Now, why is that important? Oftentimes, people don't look at long-term benefits. They're looking simply at short-term, and there's their motivation for implementation of a strategy. So does your company have the benefit? Because sometimes that's the case. Hey, will you pay me early? Your company gets the benefit versus... If you pay me early, um, I will give you a 10% discount on your receivable. Well, guess who else gets the benefit then? It's your client. But you'll get both benefits because you're not going to do anything that's going to shoot you in the foot. You're both benefiting. And it's the same thing with vendors could be benefiting by doing something short term. It could be the company owners. Um, it could be whoever it is that's impacted by that strategy and understanding who's impacted and how will go a long way towards understanding of how you talk to people and what their motivation is for working with you to implement strategies. But wait, there's more. There's a bonus. I want to just talk to you about one more thing, and that is evaluating who it is you're going to have to mentor. Mentor meaning teach, mentor meaning explain, mentor meaning show them the ropes of a, of a cash flow strategy. Now, why is that? Because generally cash flow strategies require change. Most people do not like change, even if it's good for them. Habit, it, it's easier. So, when we're talking about cash flow strategies, it goes well beyond the finance accounting group. Even though they're the ones who get the blame most of the time when things aren't going well with cash flow, the fact of the matter is it starts at the top, which is you know senior management and investors and business owners, and then sales department and the product management department, the marketing people, the operations team, everybody in the company makes decisions and does activities every single day that significantly impact the company's cash flow. So the bonus is understanding who you need to mentor, who do you need to work with 
to implement the cash flow strategy. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning a bit today about cash flow strategies, the, the ones that are common and the, what they really mean versus what they don't, but more importantly, how you can take and analyze any strategy using those 11 ways to do the analysis. I'm not going to repeat them. Go back and watch again if you want to. I hope you've enjoyed learning. And if you have, follow my channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more for you to learn about, including one by one, that those 205 strategies that I've got. By the way, it'll probably be a longer list before we're done. There's going to be a lot of gold in there, a lot of cash in there for you and your company or companies that you work with. If there's anything about cash flow that you're wondering about, let me know. Send me a message uh, and I'll try to create a video. Or, but I will get back to you if you let me know what your questions are. Remember, learning how to model cash flow, manage cash flow, and maximize cash flow starts with your mindset, starts with how you think about it, and it ends with learning how to mentor the people you work with and that you need their help to be able to implement the strategies that you understand and want to move forward with.